Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside, back to the brewery, socially distanced versions of the episodes. Uh, today we are in Castleman, Ontario. Joining me is Mario from Castle Brewery. Hey, how's it going? Hey, thank you very much for hosting us today. I really appreciate it. Um, and once again, you brought us some delicious looking beers. So let's start with beer number one. What am I going to be trying? Uh, so beer number one, you're going to be trying the Franco. So it's our Franco lager. Um, so we're the first microbrewery owned by Franco Ontarians. Uh, in Ontario, and then there's it's in Burley, and there's a Tsuk de Boo as well, uh, that followed suit. And um, so, yeah, so we made that beer because we were part of a lot of Franco festivals, mm -hmm. and, and it's the official beer of the Franco festival. Um, so, we made it for that. It's uh, just a regular uh, craft lager, 4.5 percent, delicious nose. Yeah, so it has more bite than a Pilsner, mm -hmm. but it's pretty quaffable. All right. We do a virtual a toast. A toast. Yeah, that's right. Oh. I'm always a fan of lager. I find if your lager is on point, all your beer should be on point. This is a great lager. Thanks. No, like, none of that, like, real bite to it. Just that right level of maltiness. Very, very good beer. Thanks. And, and that's a challenge for us because given the water profile that we have here in Castleman, it really promotes the malty beers uh, and because and, a high amount of calcium. So it's really hard for us to do a lager, and it, it was quite... Quite a lot of recipes yeah. to get to that, <laughs> you know. So now we yeah. adjust with salts and, yeah. and and all kinds of things. I mean, you got it right. I finished it there almost immediately. So <laughs> I'm uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, always lager first whenever I go to a place, and I've, I know I've had it before at your previous location. But uh, so let's start with that. What's the beer story? The the Castle brand. Where does that all start? Where does it begin? Well, it began in my garage. Uh, actually, no outside on a patio in 2007. Um, I had in mind to call it the Nation Brewery because we're in, or surrounded by the Nation Municipality. Mm -hmm. um, and I did my first recipe and I recall, you know, it was an American pale ale. I didn't even know what I was doing. I didn't even know what the name of the malt were. So I asked a guy who was selling me the malt and said, what do I need? He said, what do you want to do? <laughs> I don't know. I heard about American pale ale. What the hell is that? So it wasn't even hoppy what I did, but it was good. And it, it really sparked uh, the passion for uh, brewing beer. And even more when I tasted the lug thread from Bose, I was a Molson Canadian guy. Yeah. And when I tasted lug thread, I said, oh my, <laughs> this is so good. Yeah. And I really fell in love with it. And I, and I kept on going and I moved to a new place. I finally had a garage uh, and I brewed over 4,000 liters in there. And I distributed that to friends and family. And at Christmas, I would deliver like boxes. I said, hey, give it a try. Please be honest with your feedback. Because if you're not, yeah. I'm going to shoot myself in the foot, make a beer that's not good, right? <laughs> yep. And, and it worked quite well. And in 2012, me and uh, two partners, Benjamin Bercy and Michel Gassin, we started Castle Brewery. Uh, in 2012, in February, we got into the location, the previous location. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we're in our new location. Yeah. Yeah, the previous location was, I remember, next to a bowling alley, Front of near the train station, uh, next to a florist who actually yelled at us because we parked in her parking spot one time. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, yeah, some toll wings were called with, with, with the florist. So, yeah, uh, but I remember like trying the beers. I'm like, man, these guys make some great beers. So I would always, you'd always be part of my Ottawa trip where I'd hit Ottawa, hit three or four breweries there, and then you're right on the 417 on the way back, which is perfect because you're literally, you're even closer now, but you're literally right off the highway, so. Yeah, even though we were off the highway, the old location, the, the, the big challenge that we had was, was people finding us. Mm -hmm. And even though we had like signs all the way, we had a big fence, po not a poster, but a, uh, a, uh, a banner. Mm -hmm. People were still saying, we have a hard time like, finding you. Oh, well, in front of the church, like, it's pretty easy to see. Yeah. You see the church from the 417. So we had a big problem for location, and we wanted to get more people into our tap room, and that was a big issue. We had like nine seats. Yeah. That was yeah. it, right? And we knew we had to get onto the brew pub atmosphere to get the people to come and enjoy the full experience. And we had the idea of renovating the bowling alley on the other side, but still the location was an issue. When they say well, location, 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 the marketing, it can't be more yeah. true, right? Like, I mean, the only really convenient part I would find at your last place is you're right next to a Vier rail station, so. Which went well with the theme. Yeah. And, and we had a great location. It was pretty, it was pretty cool. It was smaller. And um, it came on December 2018. Uh, it was to the point where we had to make a decision. Do we keep on going or we move into a pub? Mm -hmm. And I approached uh, Brian Lafleur and Terry Lafleur that owns the next door restaurant. Brian said this place was vacant. I said, 
how would you feel about getting a brew pub together? I said, I need some help. Otherwise, we close down. Yeah. And I know getting into a pub will save us. And uh, they agreed. And I think just before New Year's, they agreed, said, let's do it. And I was like, <laughs> okay, uh, you know, it's saved by the bell, right? Yeah. Uh, and that enabled us to keep on going and actually climbing uphill. That's it, awesome. It was first uh, seven years of really, really tough financials. Yeah. So. yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, now, now uh, the original creation of the original castle location uh, to here, what were kind of some like roadblocks and, and problems you had? First of all, even just starting the castle brand alone, you know, you mentioned you had two partners, but just finding that location, deciding, hey, here's our brewery for now, and, and where are we going to go from there? What was like? some kind of difficulties you ran into with all that stuff? Well, the thing, I think, the thing that didn't help us at all uh, was the fact that we wanted to be, uh, get up on the distribution level like Ontario Y. We had big ambitions to go like in every, pretty much every LCBO mm -hmm. and ramp up. So we build up a team, we, we build up the equipment, the volume capacity, and then to a point where we, we realized we're not gonna make it. Yeah. But we were so far in debt for that. Like it was hard to actually recover. And that was the big roadblock that said, okay, well, we got to switch gear. We got to do something else, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and that was a, a and, and, and everything about sales, really hard to find a salesman, <laughs> a sales rep. Although I don't like to say sales rep, you yeah. know, a sales associate or uh, <laughs> anyway. So it was really hard to find a sales rep. I see other breweries that are very successful because they have a good sales team. We have never been able to find the right person. Although we had great people that tried it, but the no's that you get compared to the yes, yeah. it really affected them. And, 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 and rightly so. Right? Yeah. It's not easy. How did you find dealing with the LCBO? It's pretty straightforward. Although in Ontario, you know, we'd like to be everywhere. Uh, we'd like especially to have cross-selling, mm -hmm. um, which we can't at this point, but it's coming. And also something stupid like we can't sell beer in the farmer's market, but cider and wine. I yeah. believe wine. I think, I think both of them you can sell at farmer's market, but not beer. So it makes yeah. no sense. There's some regulation that doesn't make any sense. But in terms of getting approved, it was really straightforward and easy. That's Very awesome. Because I've, I've heard horror stories where it's like, oh, you have to have a minimum amount of beers coming out. You have to have a minimum of this, a minimum of that. So I didn't, I don't know exactly what that was. Because I remember the first time I ever tried your beers, it was actually out of a growler. That's how far back yeah. I first ever tried your beers. Yeah. Where you've come from, I know you had bottles at one point, now the canning line. So it's... Um, to me, I, I love cans, just convenience. Fact is when it's not COVID, you can bring them to the beach. You don't have to worry so, about anybody breaking them and yeah. you're digging up glass from the sand, but uh, just that alone. So just hearing some horror stories about the LCBO, it's like, ah, uh, and thankfully where we live in, in Quebec, you can have your local exact. grocery store and stuff. I'm seeing the shift in Ontario very slowly of grocery stores are allowing crap mm -hmm. beer, which is awesome for you yeah, guys. So. But we, there's, yeah. A, you said it about a certain volume you need to sell. So every Ontario brewery has the right to keep a skew in the LCBO, mindless of the performance of it. You know, you have a spot on the shelf being a craft brewery in Ontario. I don't know if it's still the same, but it should be anyway. But we had our Golden Rail Honey Brown, which was my first beer that I ever brewed, I'd ever created. And the volume, the sales were not there at all. So the LCBO said, well, you got to pull out some uh, stores uh, or find something else. Mm -hmm. So it came a point uh, I, that year, I think it was, geez, in 2016, we came out with the Franco or something like that. Um, we had to find a beer that's more mainstream. So we had to get away from what we thought in the very beginning, like, no, we're never going to do a mainstream beer. You know, we're just going to stick to bold flavors and something that people are not used to. But why is the big brewery so successful? Yeah. Because they have a mainstream beer. So we came out with the Franco and now we have our 1844 Pilsner. And uh, Franco, great sales in the LCBO and it enabled us to get the caboose in, our American IPA, and it, which both of them are pretty neck to neck in terms of sales. The name Castle, why'd you guys just decide on that one as, as your brewery name? Well, Castleman. So um, it was pretty obvious for that. And, um, and also the theme, because the, the train theme, because we were the first stop between Ottawa and Montreal when the railway went through town. So we really wanted to latch on that and history of the railway here in town. Um, so much so that the Railway Association of Canada sent us a letter, the president signed by the president, <laughs> a, a real signature nice. with some whistles and a bunch of stuff saying, I, thank you for you know, taking on the, the railway theme. We really appreciate it. That was pretty cool. But the thing is, 
we can't move anywhere. So yeah. people were saying, hey, why don't you go to Saint Dollar? I know there's a place, a warehouse. You were trying to find something bigger. I said, well, yeah, but we're going to keep explaining to people. <laughs> yeah. Why, why the train? There was never a train to Saint Dollar, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was a good thing that this place was vacant and uh, my partners uh, decided to take on the project. Awesome. Uh, what's beer number two I'm trying here? Golden Rail or Golden Honey Rail. Brown. And from a lot of people think there's no honey in it. It's the honey malt, which Canada is pretty... Uh, well, is alone in the world producing a malt that gets close to honey flavor. Yeah. Um, there was another brewery, uh, not a brewery, a malster. I don't remember what it was. I think it was Dingeman that was doing that. It was close to it, but nothing as such. So 5% honey brown, not a lot of honey browns around. So that's a classic. Like the only one I really ever... Other one I think of is Sleeman's Honey Brown because they promoted it as Sleeman's Honey Brown. So. Exactly. And they're, I mean, they're technically not craft, but they are micro. Like they're not yeah. macro, macro. And but. they're, uh, there's a lager. Mm -hmm. Ours is ale. And mm -hmm. uh, when you mentioned Sleeman, uh, we, uh, we are members, uh, we were members of Beer Canada. And uh, my partner Benjamin at the time uh, had the chance to mingle with the big guys at, at you know, at Beer Canada. And he, he was speaking a lot of time with John Sleeman, awesome guy, mm -hmm. really awesome guy, and uh, haven't had a chance to meet him, but he's like the little guy with the big guys yeah. in, in, that, yeah. in that major yeah. brewing scene, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to, like, he doesn't want to feel like he's better than everybody else, but he technically is because of his sales and, you know, obviously across Canada, yeah. which we mentioned pre-show, it's like, we as a show, as brewers like yourselves... We should be able to share beer across Canada. Of course, it's that yeah. simple. Without having to like you know you do your back alley trades and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's something that the Canadian government as a whole, each provincial government together, has to get together and be like, let's make these people happy. And obviously, there's money to be made. Yeah, but, you know, I'd like to see like I know it's foolish thinking, but anyway, you know, scrapping all the regulations of alcohol from the provinces. And the federal government says, you know what, this is the rules, yeah. and this is how it's going to work. But I think they're too far deep on the provincial level to even think about that. But there's also a lot of things at stake here, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, so, but I would see that so much. It, it's just, it's just stupid that we can't ship beer outside our province. We have to get familiar with each provinces and their regulations yeah. uh, if we can ship. And it's all gray area. I asked OCB and they sent me an email saying, you know what? You can't, but you can. It's like, it's a gray area. Yeah. No. I, I mean, you're already, you're already bilingual packaging, so you could just fit right into Quebec if you want. Of course. So it's, it's yeah. unfortunate, you know, yeah. that you can't, you're literally a hop, skip, and a jump from the Quebec, <laughs> Quebec Ontario border. It's, it's kind of like I get when it comes down to provincial what, but as, as beer drinkers, as those who enjoy craft, it's unfair to us. So, it is absolutely. And we're more than willing to spend money and travel for beer as, as we've done before. As I mentioned, you know, you're always my stop on my way back from Ottawa. Because awesome. you're right there. So, and now even better now, like you said earlier, <laughs> even closer <laughs> off the 417. So, so. Yeah. and that was the big thing too, getting close to the 417, more visibility. Uh, we still have yet to work on signs mm -hmm. and more sign, more more signage, but. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's perfect. Like you said, you have the restaurant in the front, you have a gas station right off the side. So if somebody's pulling off to get gas and it's like, oh, I can get beer. Sweet. Yeah. And then your LCBO is just down the street. So that's even easier. And Tim Hortons, you know, attracts so many yeah. people. St. Hubert as well, Harvey's. Uh, and this summer I'm organizing a farmer's market right next to uh, the parking lot of 92.1 FM. Uh, so every Saturday. And the strategy behind that, beside promoting local products, is also to bring more people around the brewery. And although we can't sell beer at a farmer's market, we'll be able to actually sell it without them taking it home from the market because they'll just go across, pick up their order here, and go back home. <laughs> that's great. So, you know, <laughs> that's a perfect setup. I yeah. love it. So it's, it's an awesome idea. Uh, I was in Vermont and I was killing some time. And they had like a local farmer's market, and I think it was Four Quarters Brewing, and they had like four packs available. I'm like, well, what if I want like a single of each? They're like, no, because. It's this farmer's market, we have to sell them in four packs. Oh. Or if you go to the brewery, which is a 10 minute drive away, then you could do what you want. I'm like, ah, but I'm already here. So just give me a four pack of your New England and four pack of this and then I'll get out of here. So nice. Yeah. Uh, some of your designs are very unique as well as your names. Where does that originality come from? 
Well, we started working like with the Franco was the first one we worked with illustration on it. And then the caboose followed suit. And then we have the red and the golden rail. We wanted to do something similar with illustration, but it's just such a classic beer for us. And we wanted to keep the classic look with it. And when it comes to uh, the other, like a lot of people ask, why 36, 37, you know, New England IPAs? <laughs> Well, three years ago, we did the number 34 because that was the 34th <laughs> recipe and we didn't know what to call it. So we yeah. said, oh, let's call it 34 and call it a day. Let's print the labels and go. <laughs> and we did that. But New England's IPA and AZ IPAs were not popular back three years ago. They were not that trendy. So we were like ahead of the curve uh, and we just stopped doing it. We didn't make many batches. And then we, this year, well, last year we started, we brought it back. If we worked on it mm -hmm. as the New England IPA should be, and things really took off. Like we got the 35, 34, 35 at the same time, now 36, 37. We always do duos, two different sets of hops in each of them. So we promote a four pack, mixed four pack. You nice. save more money by buying a four pack of two each instead of buying individual ones. Very cool. So it's pretty good promotion. Love the beers, they're so good. You know, New England's the no brainer, right? And uh, you make uh, soda and coffee. What, what made you guys decide to diversify into that? Well, 20, December 2017, I bought my first one kilo roaster because I wanted to get, always wanted to get into coffee, love coffee. And I find it a great parallel with craft beer because, you know, when you're, you're tasting a coffee or a beer, you're dissecting the flavors, dissecting the aromas. So it's kind of a, a similar way to, to enjoy both beverages. So uh, I, I took on learning how to roast coffee and ever since I changed to a five kilo roaster and and we have a new supplier now we have access to such amazing coffees around the world and it really like I said it's a parallel with our beer and it's us making it when it comes to the soda uh, here at the pub we wanted to have craft soda and when we looked at the price of it we said like well although it's great local soda it's gonna increase the price of our cocktail so much yeah and we just look at ourselves and, well, we have all the equipment on the other side. We can make soda. Yeah. And we got onto that and people love it. Ginger ale, cola was, is the starting point. Then we had a root beer too, it's coming soon. And we're working the summer, strawberry basil, vanilla coke, uh, orange sickle, wow. cream. So yeah, we'll be, we'll be having fun with that. It's pretty cool. Uh, as a show, uh, as our group of friends, we're all about supporting local businesses. So if I could just basically do a one-stop shop for all my vices of caffeine, and alcohol, I'm sold. So. Yeah, we got you covered from the evening to the next morning, yeah. right? Perfect. It's and, perfect. and noon, you know, I have a cola at <laughs> yeah. noon, you know, just, just chill out. Yeah, yeah. And it's not only that, like, this is the, a product that we make, and I also di diversify Castle into, I want, I want to become more and more the, uh, the focus of anything that goes well with beer. So in an online store, you will see I had a, like Maritime's Madness hot sauces, mm -hmm. I have a Pat Barbecue sauces are coming in. Spices, marinades, chocolate, sausages, all things that goes well with, with beer. And I added recently charcoal and pellets because <laughs> what you do when you drink a beer, you're barbecuing. Yeah. So uh, I'm building more and more of products and, and I, I want to be more and more known for that, for, for increasing our beer sales, obviously, because people get beer all the time with their order. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I love the idea of, of just simply diversifying. It's, it's, you got to stay, fr especially in today's market, you have to stay fresh. You have to stay relevant. You have to look at to what your main product can kind of veer off to at the mm -hmm. same time, just creating, you know, Venn diagram after Venn diagram of what's that perfect circle of, of creating that, what goes with beer and, and just, like you said, start in the morning coffee, lunchtime, soda with uh, a meal, and then in the evening you have your beer, so. Uh, what's beer number three I'm going to be trying here? That's our Caboose. And a Caboose, it's an American IPA, 70 IBU, uh, but the maltiness of it really wraps up the bitterness. And uh, we do uh, Citrus Simcoe and Morello. Originally it was just uh, Morello and, and mm. Simcoe, but now we added Citra in there. And we're, uh, we're pretty generous on our dry hops. Yeah. We love hops. It's, it's not overly hoppy in any Well, I mean, for me, it's not overly hoppy in any way. Now, I know there's people who don't enjoy hops which is madness to me because beer is hops so <laughs> well i think it has to do also with bitterness i got a lot of people who said i can't drink your caboose but i said you, what don't what don't you like about yeah. it I said well i don't like that you know that bitterness yeah. okay new england ipas there's no bitterness yeah you know and people get i think it's like a stepping stone into 
or an American IPA or an IPA where you get the bitterness by drinking New England IPA. Yeah. Because you get you get the hop flavor, so you get used to that. Yeah, no, I'm 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 usually a big fan of like big bold IPAs. Uh, there's times where oh, I'm gonna do some stouts, and now yeah. with like stuff like dessert and pastry stouts, it's like oh, I'm gonna do pastry stouts. Mm. Um, I'm gonna do some American IP uh, pale ales. I'm gonna do IPAs. I'm gonna stick to New Englands. I'm gonna have a couple of triple IPAs because after two triple IPAs, I'm on the floor. Um, <laughs> of course, it's just, same here. <laughs> it's, it's very simple, you know. You don't want to. I, I love big bold, but sometimes it's you got to relax on the alcohol percentage and yeah, you know, finding a four percent double dry hop, whatever. I just don't see it happening. So, hey, camping last year. Uh, I mentioned about high percentage of alcohol. I tried uh, an IPA that was, was it 0.5 or no alcohol? I think it was, well, yeah. I think it was no alcohol. Near beer. beer, yeah. So, it, but it was really, really good. I really enjoyed it, you know? Uh, I had the hot flavors without the alcohol. Yeah. And that was pretty cool. There's, uh, they're at a Quebec, they're called Sober Carpenter. Okay. Uh, they are brewing uh, zero or 0.5% beers. So anything from blondes to stouts. Uh, so as a joke, I, uh, for, for those who know me on the show, my real last name is Carpenter. So I said, well, that's a lie because I'm never sober. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I feel like if I ever got to interview them, it'd be perfect. So. <laughs> that's great. Uh, the Canadian Brewing Award, what'd you guys get that for? That's pretty cool. Uh, we, you know, we participated in two awards many, many times. To me, it was like, to me, it was like money wasted, not because we weren't winning. It was because we know, like, we, we submitted our Caboose American IPA. I'm sure it was probably 800 entries. Let's put it 500 entries. Yeah. Although we didn't win, we would like, I would like to know, if I invest money into an award, I'd like to know where my Caboose is. Is this number 63? Yeah. Is it 499? It really helps us see, oh, okay, so on 500 beers, we're number 36. Hey, that's pretty good. So it helps me with marketing. Uh, so, so that's, that, that's why I didn't believe much in two awards. Um, but then my brewer, uh, my brewmaster, Tyler, he said, why don't we submit our cousin Eddie, our okay. Bill's Spice Dale. Uh, like you said, I don't think this is many entries as the caboose, mm -hmm. but there's many, there's kind of many of them Belgian beers out there. So we tried and we won the gold in Kenyan Brewing Awards for Cousin Eddie. It was pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And they just mailed that to you? Mailed that to yeah. us. They asked us to do a video, COVID. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. So we have to do yeah. a video. That's the thing. On a Friday afternoon, an email came in and Tyler phoned me up. He said, hey, Mario, you got to get here. We got to do a video. Thank we got to say thank you for the award. I said, which award? I said, well, we won an award because we submitted the Martin as well. So yeah. we, we didn't know which one it was. So, uh, so we got here, we did the video. Hey, thanks, cheers. Da, 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 da. So, and yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It was That's pretty, great. It's pretty cool. So we're going to keep going at awards. Like we're going to be really tech, not technical. We've got to go with strategy, mm -hmm. like where we're going to, where we're going to go. Yeah. No, for sure. And, and you know, for, for craft drinkers who are looking for something like that, they're like, oh, I see an award. So let's go check out the other beers. Absolutely. So. It really helped us yeah. with the sales. And, you know, when, when there's a category, you have so many entries, you know, there's probably, like I said, again, on 500 entries of American IPA, mm -hmm. well, there's probably the first 200, they're freaking awesome American yeah. IPAs. There's like 0. .00 something difference in the, in the scoring, right? Yeah. So. Have you done any collabs beer-wise? Have you collaborated on any local with any local breweries? Well, our Saison Canberge, we did it uh, with Great Lakes Brewery in Toronto. So that's not local to us. Mm -hmm. um, but we did it with them. I think it was through OCB, if I remember correctly. So I went over there. And I was like a rookie in the beer industry. I think that was the year after we opened or something like that. It was like all new, all, pretty much all new to me, like the commercial aspect of it. And, um, and after that, like, we haven't done much collab. We always want to. Okay. But we get we're getting we get so busy in the season we get wrapped up in the season. It's yeah. like we, we we talk to other breweries. Yeah, we should do something. We should do something. But it never pans out. So I, I know you as a brewery we have to focus on that if we mm -hmm. want to do it. We really want to do it. So yeah. uh, all brewery friends. <laughs> <laughs> Any anybody who you think who are like your dream projects like let's say three or five guys three or four guys or gals in the brewing industry who you want to brew with or like anybody on that list who you really want to even let's just say Canada wide. Jeez, God, oh, there's so many yeah. awesome breweries. Okay, so so let's let's say between Ontario and Quebec, since that we're right next to each other. Um, well, obviously, I have a company that sells brewing equipment, so I'd like to do 
um, collabs with my clients actually uh, for with Castle. So you know, you went through kind of walking through, for example, Troy at Labrosse. He was my first client for that company uh, in 2017. Sold the system, still using it today. So. It would be cool, like, it would actually be cool with Troy. Troy, I know you're listening. <laughs> He's on Facebook, too. He's probably just saying like. On, oh, no, we're not live. So we're good. Yeah, okay. no. <laughs> so doing a, a collab. Uh, I, and I think what you mean by your question is which top three in your mind is so hard yeah. to answer. Like, collabs with the local guys, uh, my friends at Nick at Cirque de Brou and also uh, Richard at Etienne Brulé, right? Okay. I would like to do a collab with them. We already spoke about that last week on Sunday. We had a shooting with TVA, mm -hmm. uh, TV station. Yeah. Um, so uh, we, we briefly spoke about that. That's definitely something we want to do. Days go by so fast. Yeah. And that's the only reason why. <laughs> well, that's it. Like, the fact that you guys even have an hour or two for us to talk to you sometimes. I'm just like, I'm so happy. Because <laughs> like, you guys are all, I say you guys, I mean you guys and gals and everybody in yeah. the brewing industry. You're always just so busy that... Uh, the fact is you take time in your schedule to speak with us. I'm always happy about so. And, and, and you know, when you invited me, I certainly went and looked at the material because we, we spoke before, like mm -hmm. all the people that asked for, hey, send me some samples of beer. I'm yeah. going to write a blog for you. Well, first of all, there's so many of them that now we have to choose. It used to be like 10 years ago. I was like, oh, yeah, sure. Uh, you get one or two a year or something. Mm -hmm. like that, but now it's getting more and more. So it's really important for us as breweries, we look at, okay, what material do you put out? And saw the 68 episodes, like, <laughs> okay, well, that's the yeah. real deal. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's why I answer yes, yeah. of course. And, and I ask, how much time do you need from me? Yeah. And uh, just so I can book a time. Yeah, that's, we were worried that you could, like, we have the episode where when COVID hit, I'm like, I have no idea what we're doing. So it was just <laughs> me, my videographer, Phil, and another guy. And we're just like talking and I'm like, what do I do? like influencers it was going to be a natural progression of the show i eventually wanted to literally let's say there's somebody down the street who's an influencer i would interview you and then me and the influencer would sit down grab a beer and then talk and that's where the show was gonna go and then covid decide well guess what you're doing everything from home from now <laughs> so yeah because you have to do it with zoom yes we're doing zoom yeah, yeah we do it with zoom uh but still it's i've everybody i've met's awesome you know, it, we all just want to get together and grab a pint again. That's yeah, all we want. Well, all of us are getting ready to line up our shoulders for Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson. Whatever shot we get, we want that shot because we want to drink beer together again. Absolutely. So. And, you know, as a pub, we're running 50%. I want to get back to 100%. Tonight yeah. is Saturday. Today we we're having a comedy show. We're running 50%. We used to have, like, a pack house. Yeah. Like, house, house back, right? So, but it's so nice to see people <clears throat> coming out. People are so happy. And the funny thing is... Sometimes there's some like little delays in the kitchen, especially mm -hmm. when we just reopen after a lockdown. The delays and people, our staff, were going to the table and say, "Sorry, we're yeah. we're having just, just we're backlogging a little bit." People were all unanimous. Take your time. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> can I take another beer? Of course you can. <laughs> so it really eased up on that yeah. for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, speaking of another beer, what's uh, number four? I'm uh, here. Now we have the New England IPA, number thirty-six. Um, and you know what? And so we have, what hops we have in there? Mosaic, El Dorado, yeah. and Osaka. I'm, uh, mm. I'm destroying the picture here. Hey, Phil? <laughs> there you go. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. So yeah, so New England IPAs, and, and we're having a lot of fun with, with, uh, with the hops we're using. So we're, we're, we're working with more trendy hops, but then we get emails from suppliers. Oh, we have this new one from New Zealand, whatever. So yeah. we're going to latch on some newer hops that people don't know there's some crazy hops out there all kinds of flavors yeah. it's just crazy i think there's one of strawberry or something like that. yeah it's it's insane i was just <laughs> i was just generally looking and it's like oh this presents these layers this presents these layers well if you put them with these malts it gives this layers and i'm like my brain can't comprehend this i'm just gonna drink it and see what it tastes like <laughs> exactly <laughs> and you know it, it, the thing is, you can't be shy on your dry hop if you want to promote these flavors. And it's the same like when it comes to coffee. Yeah. Uh, most coffee drinkers, they want a dark coffee. But then when I tell you you're going to taste like uh, citrusy and a little bit of vanilla or whatever in the coffee, you're not going to find that in the dark because yep. it's roasted too high. You're going to find that in the medium side, on the lighter side. But most people want dark. Yeah, So yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. This is uh, another, this like super solid no like crazy like blast to the face to hops this is a nice balanced new england ipa this is something i could see myself drinking a few of now you said six 
Uh, yeah, we're at 7.2. Okay, so 7 .2, yeah. two or three, and then I'm feeling good. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I like, I, sometimes I like to chase a new IP with like a Pilsner or something mm -hmm. lighter because, you know, it really gets on your palate. Yeah. yeah. With your taste buds, of those hops. And you wake up, I don't know about you, but sometimes I wake up the next morning, I still taste the hops. Yep. It's not like yep. I went with 10 cans. I yeah. drank like three pints. Yeah. yeah. But it's like onions from McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. You, it's sometimes it's like uh, I usually I'll pair like a dry sausage with my beer or whatever. So it's just like I wake up and I'm like, mmm, dry sausage and hops. There so you go. <laughs> it's uh, it's an interesting taste when I wake up in the next morning and forget to brush my teeth the night before because I've been drinking too much. So. <laughs> Especially at my age and just I, I I don't know I don't know about you, but like not being able to go out and like drink with the guys and girls and stuff. My alcohol tolerance is like shot back down from what it used to be. So it might also be because I'm in my early 40s. So it's just like, I remember just being able to go out all night and drink. And now it's like I have three beers at home and I'm like, time for bed. So, yeah. Well, I'm 42. So yeah. we're the same group age. It's, uh, uh, it used to be a time where, you know, yeah, drinking a lot, but I can't do it anymore. Yeah. I just can't do it. Yeah. I can't wrap my head around that. <laughs> well, I'm, you're also running a brewery, so. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, I have to add this now. Uh, COVID's over. over. Uh, you know, it's safe to travel again. It's safe to get in a cylindrical tube. And you actually have some downtime. A beercation you've never been on. I want to go to, uh, you know, Oktoberfest in Munich. I want to hit that. That's in the bucket list, obviously. And... Um, I don't think, you know, my, my, I'm a cheap drunk anyway, so my alcohol tolerance is not high. I'm not really going there. Yeah, I'm going to get drunk, but yeah. it doesn't take me much to want to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe that'll change in Munich. Yes. You know, it's a different atmosphere. Yeah. Well, I understand the beers are a lot, it, they're lighter percentages of beer there, but it's also a liter of beer. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> so around. you're walking around with like two giant, I just, some of the videos I've seen, it's like these women are carrying like 16 beers and it's just like well i love you because you're carrying all that beer but uh, there's Is that, that beer so me? yeah it's all for me exactly. uh what's beer number five i'm trying so that's our prorogation brunch stout or coffee stout if you will and it's made with our coffee so oh. Inga ponte from uh colombia a medium dark uh, coffee so good such a good coffee mm. uh and even if you're a fan of dark coffee you're gonna love this one yeah uh sweet notes to it we add lactose to the beer and it's just like the nose is Beautiful. It smells like I'm about to have my fresh cup of Folgers. <laughs> Folgers? Yeah, well, Carp. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. It was like full in the air. Oh, was that Maxwell House? I yeah, think it was just, Maxwell House. You know, driving by Timmy's after they brewed fresh batch, it's like. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is yeah. delicious. Thanks. Mm. Yeah, we love this beer. And only make it in fall and winter time because yeah. obviously in summertime, stout or not that popular mm -mm. same goes our little red or red uh, or red ale it's on tap all year but not in cans all year because yeah. in summertime a lot of people say oh i would buy flats yeah but when we do 80 flats of it <laughs> yeah like we're sitting on it <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, for those who don't know uh for our american viewers and european viewers flats are a two four or a 24 beers <laughs> that's so. our slang here yeah the flat. <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah that's a really good that's a really tasty coffee beer Thanks. And like, it kind of cancels yeah. the alcohol. I don't know about you, but me, the alcohol affects no, get, me in a way that makes me sleepy. Yeah. But then you get the coffee. Yeah. So I, I get zero alcohol in that. It, it tastes like delicious coffee. Nice. So it's fantastic. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, so what's next for the Castle brand? Uh, we'll stay the course, actually. We're having, uh, we're, we're getting in, I mean, a uh, canning line at the end of the month in, in April. And uh, that canning line is going to help also local breweries. Because now the canning line service companies, they're so overwhelmed with everything. It's really, it's so hard to schedule yeah. and it's detrimental to our production. So now we want to have more flexibility and we weren't able to buy it on our own. So we approach other local, very local breweries. Like it's really, for example, uh, would you like us to can for you? So I'm going to take on four breweries. And we're gonna go around. Uh, Daryl, that works for me, takes care of the warehouse. He's gonna be on the line, so we're gonna provide the service. I don't want to become a canning uh, uh, yeah. service by <laughs> any means, not at all. I want to get that, but I want to help friends yeah. in the industry. Start and, getting calls from Hudson. No, 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 no exa <laughs> exactly, exactly. And but if Troy calls me and he needs help, <laughs> absolutely, I'll be right over. Even Drew, or you know, yeah. if something happens, we're gonna be on the road, we're gonna help these guys. 
And, um, and so it, it really helps us to have the full flexibility that we need of a canning line. Awesome. Yeah. So. And post COVID, uh, big plans for post COVID besides hundred percent, obviously with the, for the restaurant and the, uh, the pub. Yeah. hundred percent capacity. Uh, we're moving to a new warehouse in August, so uh, that'll be pretty cool. Um, right, we sold the building where we're at now. We, we used to own it. Now we're moving to another place that's closer to here because we traveled the forklift in town. It's kind of <laughs> funny. <laughs> like a forklift's not meant for the road. Yeah. Like there's no lights. There's nothing. Like, there's, a, there's a strobe on top. That's pretty much it, right? <laughs> that's great. Uh, awesome. Hey, uh, I just realized I still have my freaking mask in my, yeah, don't in my worry neck. About it. There you go. Well, oh. I mean, when we came in, we we're obviously doing the social distancing yeah. and being safe, you know. And uh, like I said before, beer is science. I believe in science. Well, that's why I'm, you know, as soon as where I live, my age group is like, hey, time to get your shot. Cool. When can I go? Absolutely. And I'll take an hour off work if I have to. So. Yeah. And, and we're, we're pretty close to getting... I, I, I hope there won't yeah. be like a third lockdown. I really hope so because we're getting into the summer. We can't miss another summer. Um, you know, we're, we're pretty fortunate that we're able to put everything on pause on the pub side. Mm -hmm. But it's not for everyone. No. You know, and we want, we want to have a business that runs all the time. You know, it's, it's not a thing like, it's not like we don't, that we don't mind being on pause. Mm -hmm. We mind a lot because we want the business. We want to see people, we want yes. people happy. And this year we're going to extend our patio outside. Just like last year, we still have the right to do so. We'll just double check. But people really enjoy the larger patio and being outside. Well, it's my understanding that your government's going to keep allowing, or your provincial government's going to keep allowing you to ship beer even past COVID. You know, there's, there's always positive stuff in everything, even though the pandemic has been very detrimental to small and medium-sized businesses. Um, <clears throat> it, it's, we had a really positive impact where it comes to uh, establish our online presence. Like in December 2019, our website for selling beer online was in place with the pro with products and stuff, and uh, it didn't take off at all. And yeah. it was just before Christmas. I was yeah. kind of like, Ugh, that was a bummer. And we had all these boxes and sausages and a bunch of stuff. And uh, COVID hit, then boom, our online store is up. Our month of April and May were absolutely incredible. And then it nosedive because you know. Yeah, I guess people spend too much money in April and May. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we kept we we stayed a course, and now we love doing deliveries. It's pretty cool, and people like it a lot. And we offer more product in our online store in our pub because we don't have the space in our pub for like a merch mm -hmm. section now. So uh, online, we pro we provide way more product. That's that's awesome, and and you guys are staying the course, and obviously with the expansion just before COVID and, and still being able to keep up and it's it's fantastic here that you guys are still staying relatively pretty strong in the area so yeah and like the idea like i said earlier of becoming like a large distribution company that's out the door mm -hmm. we don't want to tap on that at all um we believe about bringing people here that's why we want to stay the course of the company stay small yeah we just want to hit our maximum volume of what we can produce that means we're reaching the highest level of profitability that we can and the nice thing about recent new yeast, like the Kavik yeast, for yeah. example, yeah. is we're able to turn around a fermenter in half the time for some of the yeah. beers. So that's always an option. Instead of doubling up our fermenting capacity, we just can switch a few beers to the, the Kavik, right? Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Uh, okay. I got nothing else for you today. This was fantastic. I really appreciate you taking time to your obviously very busy schedule, including uh, tonight of the recording, having a comedy show here to be able for us to speak with you. Um, let my viewers know where they can find you. Absolutely, castlebury.ca and on Facebook, Castlebury, obviously. Instagram, Castlebury. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much where yeah. we have Twitter account. We don't use it at all, really. We have yeah. it, but it's like... T -t Twitter's starting to go down, so. Yeah, um, it didn't go down with Trump, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you guys uh, doing what you do for, for the beer industry. Uh, you know, all the episodes you did, like, it's really, really good. And thanks, thanks for uh, inviting us to, uh, inviting me. Yeah, no, uh, be part like of I show. said, it's the fact that you guys take time here to schedule to speak with us. You know, a couple of guys from Montreal who just love talking about beer. It's awesome. So I think we could probably go on for much longer too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but realistically, you're opening soon and uh, <laughs> we have a curfew. So. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 that's unfortunate. Uh, as for us at All Beer Inside, it is everywhere else. Allbeerinside.com is the website. Hopefully it's back up and running properly by the time this episode is out. 
And as I say at the end of all episodes, drink craft, not crap. That's right.